up on today's show. Customer deliveries of the Ford F-150 Lightning electric pickup finally begin in the US. New SEC filings from Faraday Future shows that as of now, it only has 401 reservations for the FF91, far less than it previously suggested it had. And a study of car buyers suggests that legacy automakers might have a hidden leg up on startups in the race to market. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me. It has been more than a year since Ford first unveiled the F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck at a special event in Dearborn, Michigan, USA, which also means that for a whole year, plenty of eager reservation holders have been patiently waiting for their own trucks. And this week, the very first F-150 Lightning was officially delivered to Nicholas Schmidt of Standish, Michigan. The truck, a platinum trim variant, arrived at the dealership earlier this week and Schmidt headed off there on Thursday to pick it up. An existing EV owner, Schmidt already has a Tesla Model 3 in his garage and as the CTO of a grid optimization startup, he's reportedly happy to be replacing his gas-powered F-150 with the all-electric version. Having previously put down a deposit on a Tesla Cybertruck and a Rivian R1T, it was the F-150 Lightning that arrived first, something that apparently his wife was very pleased about since she hates the design of the Cybertruck. Congratulations to them both. Israeli battery firm Stordot has been increasing its reach and investor base this year, with plenty of big names, including Volvo, Daimler and Polestar, making investments. And this week, Polestar and Stordot announced a strategic partnership to investigate using Stordot's silicon-dominant lithium-ion batteries in future Polestar models. Stordot, which recently demonstrated its battery technology live online during an event in Israel, says it will have its 105 battery charge technology ready for mass production in as little as two years' time. Right now, many major automakers are testing Stordot sample cells produced on the company's small-scale production line in their own vehicles. And according to Polestar's CEO, if the pilot project it is currently working on with Stordot is successful, the firm wants to implement Stordot's revolutionary charging tech in its vehicles from 2026 onwards. Last week, I told you on this channel how the majority of legacy automakers will most likely fail to meet the required targets set out by the Paris Climate Accord. These targets focus on reducing global emissions in order to keep global warming temperature rises to below 1.5 degrees C. And many of you were unsurprised that Big Auto was failing. This week, we have another failing group to add to the list. Yep, big oil. In a new study by Oil Change International, every major US and European oil and gas company's climate change pledges were examined, and every single one failed to come close to an alignment with the 1.5 degrees C temperature goal set out in the Paris Agreement. They may be spending billions on flashy new ads telling us they're working on cleaner sources of fuel, but most companies are rated as being grossly insufficient or insufficient, and ExxonMobil and Chevron are failing to score above grossly insufficient across the board. I'll link to the report below. At CES 2016, Faraday Future unveiled a concept single-seat race car in the form of the FF0. It was outlandish and, I know this because I was there, was also not a functioning vehicle. One year later at CES 2017, the company unveiled what it said would be its first car, the FF91. Unveiled at a special event to whoops from employees of the company, the vehicle suffered some significant on-stage problems, but nevertheless, a few months later, Faraday Future claimed it had more than 14,000 reservations for the same. Earlier this year, the troubled company came under the spotlight of the SEC after allegations were made that it was misleading investors. And this week, thanks to a new SEC filing, we learned how much Faraday Future has been spreading bovine byproduct. 
As of the end of the first quarter this year, the company has just 401 paid reservations. What's more, according to one short seller of the company, 80% of those orders appear to have come from a company that may be a Faraday Future subsidiary. We have always been cautious of this company. Now I think you can see why. Euro NCAP has officially revealed the latest slew of crash test results for 2022 model year cars, and there are three five-star recipients in the EV world. The Kia EV6, Renault Megane E-Tech and Volvo XC40 Recharge all came out top with five-star ratings, with the Volvo XC40 Recharge coming out top overall with best results of the three, sitting at 92%, 89%, 70% and 89% ratings respectively in adult occupant, child occupant, pedestrian and safety assistance categories. While the Renault Megane E-Tech fared worst in adult protection, scoring 85%, it was the EV6 which fared worst in pedestrian protection, scoring 64%. It's worth noting that while five stars are becoming the norm, we don't talk about the Renault Zoe, pedestrian safety scores are most likely to be a car's poorest performing area. It's not always the case, but usually so. Back in 2013, I got behind the wheel of the BYD E6 for the first time at a test track in the UK, and I have to say that I was not impressed by its handling or performance. But in the nine plus years since, BYD has really changed its quality and EV smarts, and this week it unveiled a brand new car that I think will get the seal of approval from buyers, because it's called the seal. Starting from the equivalent of $31,709, the BYD Seal Rear Wheel Drive Elite offers a claimed Chinese test cycle range of 342 miles, 550 kilometers, and a 150 kilowatt electric motor. There are a total of four models on offer, but the range topping long range all wheel drive variant, which is $43,300 equivalent, claims a 650 kilometer, 404 mile range in China and a sprint time of 3.8 seconds. It's also pretty good looking. What do you think? It's all too easy in the EV world to forget that brands EV fans show an interest in is very different to the brands that mainstream buyers show interest in. But a new study this week from Escalant EV Forward polling mainstream car buyers on their opinions of EVs show how the two groups think can be very different. It shows that outside the EV world, more than one third, 35% of participants said they would favor purchasing their first electric car from a quote, well-established automaker, while just 24% said they'd look to buy their first electric vehicle from an EV startup. Interestingly, this survey seems to put Tesla in with Rivian and other EV brands in the startup segment, which frankly I'd argue Tesla most certainly isn't anymore, but it does show that while EV fans may shun legacy auto, most customers are going to go with what they know. Volkswagen Group CEO Dr. Herbert Diess has helped steer Volkswagen away from the horrendous wreck that was the Dieselgate scandal and towards a brighter future. And while he doesn't have the full support of some of the old guard members of the Volkswagen board, he certainly helped the company head towards an all-electric future. Unlike many automaker CEOs, Dies hasn't dismissed Tesla either, even meeting with Elon Musk multiple times in recent years to talk EVs. But this week on CNBC's Squawk Box Europe at the World Economic Forum in Switzerland, Dies reiterated that Volkswagen's goal still includes a plan to catch up with and potentially overtake Tesla in the EV marketplace by 2025. Praising Tesla and Musk for all they've done thus far, Dies appears to believe that Tesla's USP is starting to wane as it rushes to bring new factories up to speed, not to mention launch multiple new products. It's going to be interesting to see the reaction from Tesla and Musk on this one. Talking of Tesla, its Advanced Battery Research Division, as founded in 2016, has helped Tesla stay at the forefront of battery research. Led by Professor Jeff Dunn and a team of researchers at Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, where my mum is from, the battery research design team 
test new battery cell chemistries to make electric car batteries stronger, last longer, and go further. And this week, a new paper was published to the Journal of the Electrochemical Society detailing the team's latest research, a new potential nickel-based battery cell design that could last up to 100 years in the right environment. Said to be comparable to current LFP battery cells in terms of charging and energy density, this new chemistry could pave the way for grid-tied battery storage solutions that could literally last generations. Imagine your children's children using a storage system that you saw getting installed. I don't know about you, I think that's pretty cool. Back in 2017, British adventurer Chris Ramsey and his wife entered the history books by becoming the first people to enter and complete the London Mongol Rally in an electric car, driving from London to Mongolia completely unsupported in a lightly modified Nissan Leaf in just 55 days. Since then, Chris has broken some other records, including riding an electric bicycle the length of the UK. But this week, he officially announced his new adventure, driving from pole to pole in an EV. Taking an adventure-prepared Nissan Aria E-Force from the Arctic all the way through North, Central and South America before crossing to the Antarctic, the car will feature modified suspension and upgraded tyres, but its journey through the Americas will be joined by an unmodified Aria. I've known about this trip for what feels like forever, and I'm hopeful that we can all catch Chris for a brief chat on his way south. The trip kicks off next year. Rightly or wrongly, a large proportion of the world seems obsessed with how far you can go per charge in an electric vehicle, even if your bladder range is probably only a few hours. Well, this week, the folks over at the Kilowatts YouTube channel decided to try and see just how far they could make a Lucid Air Dream Edition range travel per charge. The longest leg EV you can buy today, the EPA rating of the Lucid Air is 520 miles, 836 kilometers. But Ryan and his buddies managed to eke out 687.4 miles or 1,106.2 kilometers. It is a new record for a production car on public roads, but not quite near the 1,000 mile record set on private tracks by specially prepared EVs. It is impressive, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend you try and replicate this yourself. And finally, regulars to this channel will know that both I and Kate Walden Elliott have something of a soft spot for the original Land Rover. I grew up on a dairy farm and Kate had friends with one, so we've both spent some significant time in and around them. And when I drove a prototype Land Rover Defender with all-electric drivetrain nearly a decade ago, I've got to admit to falling in love. In fact, I think I might even consider trading in the F-150 Lightning for one. And now UK conversion specialist ECCs are making me much more tempted to do that, thanks to the unveiling of a drop-in conversion kit for original Land Rover Defenders that allow you to replace the internal combustion engine with Tesla-derived drivetrain and battery pack. I said Defenders, I mean Series 1, 2, and of course 3 as well. Right now, ECC is only selling the kits to other conversion businesses, but hints that ultimately it might sell the kits to end users too. I want one of these so hard because, well, yum. But sadly, I fear it will be quite out of my price range, probably by quite a lot. Pouty face. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV and clean energy news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched, why not switch to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch and in doing so, you'll help wean New Zealand off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations. I'll be back next week with more awesome content, but until then, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time!